It's unstable tubby with Sarah and Maggie. Hey, bestie. Hey, bestie. I don't know if this is a stable or unstable opinion that I have, uh, so I'm curious your take on it. But I believe that when serving watermelon to children, it is preferred to serve with the rind on. I don't think that's an unstable opinion. I I get the mythology of it because you don't have to have like a napkin or a fork. You can just hold the rind, right? It's mm-hmm. it's, it's thus the peel of the banana. The rind is the the watermelon. Correct. Yes. It's a, it's, it's built in holder. Mm-hmm. No, mm-hmm. I don't. I I agree with that. When I cut Walter what when I cut watermelon for, for ch- Walter. <laughs> Well, Walter doesn't like watermelon anymore. I know. I know. He there's a picture. Hold hold yeah, for I go to play golf. I found these trees. Imagine I'll try my golf club. Your golf clubs are by the front door. The door, but I can find it. Okay, we'll look by the front door, okay? In between the front door and the living room. Okay, I'm Okay, shut the door. Okay, thank you. Could you hear him? Yes. Did you hear him say, all right, I'm I am five. I'm five. I'm <laughs> almost five. I think you just turned four, dude. One second. Please hold. Hold for an airplane. A kid's airplane or an actual <laughs> <laughs> Came in. Did you see what he came in with? No, I couldn't see him. I just heard him. Oh, so Arthur just ran into the room with a golf ball and a tee and he goes mom i got my golf ball and and this thing but i don't have my golf clubs i cannot find my golf clubs (laughs) oh Uh, children children. okay yeah Um, so walter does not like watermelon yeah i know i wish he was here to give his version but he has grown into a person like his mother, I will say, that doesn't like the seeds. The seeds bother him. So he doesn't want to eat any watermelon. And I show him these pictures of him from like last summer and the summer before. There's one of him and MJ and Arthur, like the three of them, like chowing down on watermelon with the rind. And now he's like, no, I don't, I don't like watermelon. I can't think of the last time I had a watermelon with seeds though. Really? Yeah. And I'm not like purposefully seeking out seedless watermelon, but huh. when I am at the store, I don't know. Every time I grab a watermelon, it's like, it's seedless. Well, hey, next time you grab them, grab two. I will. Because you must have the magic touch. Because whenever we get them, they have like even the white seeds, you know, the white little seeds that are in there. Oh, uh, yeah. I guess, I mean, there'll be like a couple of those, but those like you don't even have to spit out. Well, Walter notices take- them before he takes a bite. He examines the watermelon. Uh, Mm-hmm. And if he seeds the seeds, like no, I don't want that. I don't like watermelon anymore. I'm like, why? You know, in this case, I will make an exception and say it might be better to do just chunks then, because yep. then you get the you get the seeds out and you use use a fork. He's old enough to use a fork, you know. Yeah, he is old enough to use a fork. Whether or not he chooses to use a fork, that's it. It's another debate. Yeah, but no, I don't think that it's no. a controversial opinion to say that when you cut watermelon for children. It is preferred to cut it with the rind on. It's so much, so much less messy. I just was thinking about it the other, like the other day I was serving watermelon and I was like, this is great. I can't even imagine serving it to them because they will use their hands no matter what. Mm -hmm. Anyways, you know, it's just like one of those things. You're going to be cleaning them up no matter what. Mm -hmm. And so, um, which I don't know, speaking of cleaning, are you ready for your fact? I love How you segue. Yes, I am ready for my fact. People often think of cats spending their days napping, but they also spend 15 to 20% of their time grooming themselves. Classic cat, you know? It's a classic cat. Jamie, there's this. Was there more to that fact? No, that's it. Okay, I didn't know if I interrupted because I was so excited to, like, yeah, that makes sense. Um, There's this. Mo- like this cat impression that's it's not an impression. Uh, let me be clear. It is like th- the dumbest thing in the world. 
but I did it one time for my husband ages ago, ages ago. And he was like, Sarah, do do the cat thing. <laughs> like, <laughs> and it doesn't have any sound. So if you're listening to this, you won't be able to hear it. But it's just it's literally we move microphone. It's me pretending to be a cat, licking yeah. my paw and then wiping my pretend ear. And he found it hysterical. I'm like, everyone does this. I th- let me let me describe what I just witnessed. <laughs> it was uh, I'm gonna be as specific as possible. Sarah had a look on her face like, <laughs> I don't care. Like I don't care. Not even like a look like I care enough to look like I don't care. It was just like dead eyes. Then <laughs> she took her hand and it was limp, limp at the wrist, licked the back of the hand, like close to where the wrist bends, I would say, closer to that side than to the fingy side. And then over her eye, wiped away as if wiping bangs out of her face. And that was it. That was it. And I will say, I hope that by describing what I just saw, People can visualize that or head to our YouTube and watch it. But I think that I did a pretty good job and people are probably laughing hysterically, much like your husband did when you did this cat impression. I didn't know you had such talent. Honestly, I knew you were a talented actor. I knew you were a woman of many talents, but I did not know you could do a cat impression like that. I prefaced it by saying it is nothing. It is absolutely nothing. You downplayed it. You downplayed it. Stop it. That was incredible. I don't even. Are you a cat? I don't know. You know, if I could have sing, if I could sing, they would have had me on Broadway for Cats, hundred percent. You wouldn't even. They wouldn't even put you in costume. No, you would just walk out there would as yourself, cat. do your miming, and you don't even have to walk on all fours. You would literally just walk out in like jeans. Yeah, do that cat ear clean, and people would be like, "Well, uh, get Peta. There's a cat on the stage." Mm-hmm. And I'm like, no, you no, know? no, it's just me. I'm a method actor. I yeah. embody the um, subject I'm representing in my performance. Yeah. You know, This wasn't my react question, but I am going to pivot in the moment because we are improvisers at our core. What is – what are? do you think if you were a cat or a dog, which one would you be? You know what I'm saying? Cat. You would. Yeah. A thousand percent. After in- seeing that, I can't see any other way. <laughs> well, let me tell you why. I do believe dogs might be the superior pet out of the two. And that's a big might because I've had a, a cat as a pet. Um, I enjoy cats. I think they make great pets. DM me if you disagree. But if I were to be one, I would prefer being a cat because they are inside most of the time. And – and if you cause enough trouble, your owner will let you out once in a while. So you could cat around. <laughs> cat around. So you could cat around, you know? And But you're dignified when you do so. Like I, there's this mm-hmm. white-ish cat that I don't know what house it belongs to, but it cats around sometimes on our fence in our yard. Um, we call him Toonses. And he just – has it going on as he walks and he observes and then he's like, you know, I'm done. Let's go back to where I belong. Whereas I feel a dog is much more. Let me go outside. Let me go outside. I'm outside. I'm outside. Ah, da, 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 needier. Yes. They're needier. And th- I feel like dogs are outside more. Again, a lot of my decisions are based on how dirty am I going to get. <laughs> you would spend 15 to 20 percent of yourself of your time cleaning yourself. For sure. That's – see, and I don't like that bit. Dogs are just like, this is me. Mm-hmm. Take me as I am. Love me for who I am. As I am and saying this, our dog, Lady Squirrel, is asleep on the bed with her head on the pillow like a human. So now I'm like, maybe I'll just be Lady Squirrel because she's got it going on. She's inside. She's inside. Yeah. That's great. What about you? What would you be? I think I would like to be a cat. I think they just have more autonomy, mm-hmm. more freedom. They can get snuggles if they want. They can get fancy feast if they want. Mm-hmm. Um, I think a dog is like, your purpose is to work and be my best friend, you know? And that's a lot of pressure. I think mm-hmm. a cat is like, I've chosen you to be my best friend. 
let's do this thing together. I will poop inside. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Cats for sure. Now let's play What Word Am I Thinking Of? Beans. The game where Maggie and Sarah use their telepathic best friend abilities to try and guess the word the other is thinking. All right, Maggie, um, we are here again um, uh, to see if our best friend can transcend through the Wi-Fi and see if you can accurately guess guess the word that I'm thinking of. Hold on. Mm-hmm. Let me, I'm going to look at the word uh, for three seconds and I want you then to see if you can say the word that I'm, I'm thinking of. Three, two, one. Leaf. No, it is not leaf. And my heart sank a little bit because I thought for sure oh. this, this is what was gonna happen. We we got it. Oh, is it fork? Yes! It's <laughs> fork. I'm never gonna guess fork first because now I am in my head about it and I'm like, <laughs> she's not gonna do that bit, and then she's gonna be like, Maggie, stop. The fit is overplayed put a fork in it, it's done. And so I'm never guessing fork first. I'm never doing it. Never. Uh, Never. (laughs) Don't ever. Don't ever expect me to guess fork. Don't ever expect it. It's not going to happen. I'm not making fork happen. Stop it with fork. (laughs) All right. Sarah, are you ready for a fact? Born ready. Because kids experience less REM or rapid eye movement during sleep than grown-ups, they are more likely to sleepwalk. In fact, almost all children will sleepwalk at some point, most commonly between the ages of three and seven. That's fascinating. That's really interesting. I'm wondering now when you say that, when Walter gets up, I'm like, is he sleepwalking or is he really awake when he comes into the, our bedroom and says, I'm hungry, I need a snack? Yeah. Do you respond to it as if he really does need a snack? Uh huh. Does he eat? Uh, sometimes if we actually go get him one, because usually if this happens, if he says I'm hungry and a snack, we're like, okay, bud, let's get you back in the bed and we'll get you a snack. And if Mm -hmm. he falls back asleep, then we don't. But sometimes he's like, where's my snack? (laughs) (laughs) He'll come back into the room like you never brought me a snack. You're like, oh dang, you are awake. You okay, are awake. this is 50-50. <laughs> All children sleepwalk, so it's like statistically it could have been. Oh yeah. You still sleepwalk. We just talked we about We just talked this. about that. I yeah. know. And I already had this fact prepped and I was like, I think I should share this in the next episode. Absolutely. Um, but I think you should go into detail though about your sleepwalking experiences. Cause you've asked Kyle in the past to record you when you sleep talk. I don't think I asked him, but he did. <laughs> he did record. He had a little journal. Like when we were newlyweds, he would write it down. I've gotten into arguments with like my my college roommate, Lindsay. One time I woke up and she was like, I'm really sorry. And I was like, what happened? And she goes, you were talking in your sleep again. And I got really irritated. And then we had a little argument and I feel really bad. And I was like, well, I literally don't remember any of it. So you're good. And I hope you accept my apology. <laughs> Gosh, man. Um, one time I took off when I was in high school, I had a dream that my mom was like taking things of mine and putting them in her closet. And when I woke up, everything was off the room, all, off the walls of my room and laid out next to my bed, like all the pictures and artwork and everything. Once I thought I had a disco ball in my room and I thought it was made out of chocolate and I woke up cuddling it with some tiny mirrors on the blanket. Um, Did you eat? Do you think you ate? No, I don't think I ate it. I don't think I ate it. Um, With Kyle once, I uh, lifted up his shirt and told him (laughs) that he had evil blueberries on his belly. (laughs) Um, (laughs) So... Yeah, when I first learned how to snap when I was like seven, so within the age or age range, this is a age range one, um, an appropriate time to sleepwalk. I had just learned how to snap, and my mom said, 
I was just wandering the hallways snapping. That would and freak she was like, me out. Hey, what are you doing? And I was like, just snapping. Just snapping. That would terrify me. That would terrify me. There have been times where we've walked by Walter's room um, before we go to bed and he's been asleep and he's like standing up in the room. <laughs> And it freaks me out. I'm like, what are you doing? Like, just standing. Yeah. And it's terrifying. I love – so three. I have three kids, and at any given point, it's almost like they're in sync because they go to sleep around the same time. Mm-hmm. So it'll be like 11 o'clock at night, and one of them will start talking in their sleep, and then another one will start talking, and then you can hear the third one talk. And so it's just the symphony of tiny children having conversations with nobody. It's like, no, I said not to do that. And then it's like, that's my pencil. And then it's bubbles. (laughs) They're always arguing with someone. Yeah. Yeah, Mm -hmm. that makes sense. That tracks. Yeah. Um, Well, are you ready to react? I am ready to react. Okay. So kids are more likely to sleepwalk than grownups. If you could control what your kids did when they sleptwalked, sleepwalked, sleepy walked, walked in their sleep. Sleepy walk. Yeah. When they sleepy walk, what would you want them to do? That's a, that's a loaded question. And here's why. Because... Like, as a a good mother would say, I would want them to get back into bed and fall back asleep so they can rest. That's what I think you're supposed to say to this question. Like, well, I don't know. I but, I don't know. but like me, if Walter was safe, like let's assume like he's safe when he's doing yeah. this, and he is sleepwalking, and he's going to be sleepwalking safely and wake up still rested. Yeah, what would I want him to do? I would say um, probably like clean out the fridge, like do something that no one wants to do. And it doesn't take a lot of time, like just move everything out, wipe down the shelves, put every back and then he can go about. That would be a good sleepwalk activity too, because if he's looking for snacks, like if Mm. he's hungry, then Mm -hmm. he can like also enjoy some snacks. It's like a reward for working hard, clean, wipe, eat, clean, wipe, eat, put back, go Mm -hmm. to sleep. Yeah. And I think that's a great mother. It's knowing your child, honestly. That was and to be that was a fantastic answer. And to be fair, Walter loves to clean. He loves to he loves to clean. He will clean and ask to clean. Because he likes the spray bottle and he likes doing that. And he likes accomplishing tasks and helping yeah. out. So I don't think this is too far fetched. I do think with him sleepwalking though, it alleviates like the distractions. Like he's focused on this. And right. once he's done, he'll go back to bed. Yeah. What yeah. about you? I think if- I think that was I think that was a great answer. I just want to give you props and say oh, you are a you. good mother for, thank for you. that. Um, I was thinking along the same lines of like, oh, they, they go in any toy that they have put in a spot that they think is the new spot that it belongs in, but it's not the spot that I necessarily think it belongs in. Mm -hmm. Um, they would go and they would put everything back where I, I would like it to go. Like if I could control it, I'd be like, you know, like just the other day. It was like I have bins that are labeled and mm-hmm. they have drawings of what goes in those bins. And one of my kids' favorite games is I, to put things that don't belong, like to empty out an entire bin and put everything, like all of the action figures in the car bin and, and then put all of the cars in the action figure bin. And it's genuinely like their favorite game. Take all the books off the bookshelf put all the books under the bed. And I'm like, all of these things are not um, not how I had intended. You know? Yeah. No, and, and to be fair, it's not like how you intended. It's just how it's intended. Like there's no – it's right. not a personal preference. It's just how it's done. For example, the other day I was helping Walter find something in his room and I go, is it under the bed? He goes, no, it's not. And I go, well, have you looked? He goes, yeah, the only thing under there are my dirty clothes. <laughs> and I said, why are your dirty clothes underneath the bed? He goes, because it was faster than oh. to put them in the laundry hamper. 
And yeah. I'm like, but where do clo- dirty clothes go? And he said, in the laundry hamper. Yeah. I'm like, I don't, where's the disconnect here? So maybe I'll change mine too. Maybe instead of cleaning the fridge, our children would merely sleepwalk and put things where they're supposed to go. Yeah. 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 I think I have over dialed on like everyone can be who they want to be. Everyone can do what they want to do because now my kids are like, this action figure is going to be in the toy bin. And then I'll be like, wait, let's put him back in his home where with his family. And then they're like, no, we're putting his whole family in the car bin. And I'm like, no, no, but there's a bin. And then it's just, you know, then it gets too complicated. And so now our action figures are in our car bin. It's chaos. But you know what's not chaos? Sleepwalking to correct, to correct it. Thank you so much for joining us. If you enjoyed this episode, we would love a review, subscribe, or for you to share this with a friend you think would like it. Or all three of those things. You can do all three and make our day and help us grow.